What's up, Shredders? My name is Logan, aka Spiderhands, and welcome to an SP Patrons video today that I'm making for RSC as part of their custom monthly music review. And if we switch over to here, we have ourselves a track on the screen. This is from an act named Power Station, titled The First Tier. I think I've listened to them before. I'm keen to hear more. And uh, we're going to listen through this track from start to finish. We're going to hear what we think. Let's go. Straight into it. I think I reviewed this one before, but I'm keen. I'm clearly I'm keen to continue. That bass is so beefy, dude. See that vocal transition to that last line there, that day, that was super tight. I like the crowd chemistry there, how they interact with the audience because they know they know the words. Very well connected, very, very solid performance so far. I would have liked the guitar solo to be a bit louder. I I imagine that is potentially not a, an opinion I share. It might be, to be fair. I think they're great singers. It just seems like some of the drums and the vocals are a little bit too loud in the mix. There's a risky bend there.
已失恋。So they're very comfortable with the steam they've got. Crowd seem to enjoy it. That's good. I think it's a well-written song. It's just a shame about the mix, but we're not going to focus on that because I think that's a uh, given. Um, we're going to have a look through the lyrics of the song, and then we're going to talk about it more in the conclusion. So we've got lyrics here, kindly provided by RC. Thank you for that. Um, in English, I was finally pushed to you by to the brink of heartbreak. My eyes looking at you have said goodbye. Oh, okay, I get it. So it's about a breakup and dealing with the the breakdown of a relationship, I suppose. I shed my first tears for you. These hot tears scald my face. I get why like people would relate to this. I think most people can relate to going through breakups and being this painful. You know, unless you got with your first love, in which case, you did, congrats, <laughs> well done. My eyes looking at you have said goodbye. You never reached a promise to love me, but I wanted to love you for many years. Yeah, I get it. I kissed, loved the flavor of wailing when you kissed my quivering lips. My heart suddenly cracks. Um, when I think of you, I fall into an abyss. I shared my first tears for you. I love the flavor of wailing. I shared my first. You already shared your first tears. I shared my first tears for you. I assume that's not an allegory for something else. That's simply that they've already mourned by other people, but like this is the first time they felt this way, you know? That they were that experienced. They're more experienced than them. Okay, I kind of get what this track is about. I'm going to talk about it more in the conclusion. Because welcome to the conclusion of my review of this track from an act named uh, Power Station, titled The First Tear. Now, what do I think this track is about? I mean, we spoke about it in the lyrics section, but effectively, I think that this song is about... It's about someone who is dealing with a breakup and they are uh, finding that this is the first time they've really felt this way towards someone. They were, they were desperate for that person to say, I love you, and they never really did. And so I think that this was just a miscommunication or a, 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 just a, they, they, they weren't good for each other and they're just dealing with um, having to come to terms with that heartbreak at, at this point within in this track. I, I think that's a story that a lot of, again, as I mentioned, a lot of people will be able to relate to. I think lyrically it's effective. It's not too alienating. I understand why there's a crowd behind them. And the way they sung this piece seemed like they were genuinely crying out. There was parts at the end there where they were really sort of wailing. And it made, it made sense, you know, for what we're discussing there. It's a really hard thing to deal with. It's one of the most kind of brutal things to come to terms with, you know. So I think that it makes sense that they are this passionate about it. It didn't seem too over polished. It seemed like they were still just as sort of like, it seemed very raw for them, even though I assume this might've been a song they've written a, bit, a, a little while ago. I, I could be wrong, but, but either way, it, it sounds like a classic. Cause that's why I'm saying that. It's a song where clearly both vocalists, uh, I, I think the guy on the left, if I'm not mistaken, if I um, remove myself, for a second, can I can I remove myself for a second? Yeah, so the guy on the left, he took like the first half of the choruses and then the second guy would like come up with harmonies and stuff like that on the right. Their voices complement each other well. I think that they were, they, they have great chemistry 
and they have slightly different ranges and they niche nicely and they work well with the guitars, bass and drums. They both play the guitars really well and I think they're, they're solid performers in front people. Especially some of the falsetto parts as well as the hinges voice of the vocal fry occasionally. It was great. You know, we had like a range of different elements and that's the beauty of having two singers is that you can have different, slightly different elements to make an overall more sort of enthralling performance. So I think that the vocal melodies and harmonies we chose as well as the back, backing vocalists with the, like the singers and then kind of chanting stuff near the end maybe repeats the main vocal parts as well uh, outside of the main vocal lines we were solid you know we were surrounded by the singing throughout the track and it grew and grew as we went on and it was great to listen to there was clearly pain in there but it was still a really dope tune and that the vocal the singing alone was handled well so it's when we come to the actual track itself at 637 i think that the combination of the keys bass guitar and various the drum parts as well as the various guitar parts were solid. I think that we had a strong foundation with those ingredients. I think that if we had had the guitar, I can like, I imagine that if everything was sort of leveled more kind of like levelly and the guitars were a bit higher, like the guitar was a bit higher and stuff like that. If it had been the studio recording, you would have had, and the part near the end where we kind of allowed the theme to kind of resonate for a bit and play through, I have a feeling that would have been more compelling because you would have had other instruments coming in and sort of like highlighting bits where there weren't, where wasn't the story being told, if that makes sense. Because I feel like at six minutes 30 of a track, you really need to have something different near the end outside of the main chorus and sort of like verse lines in order to keep things kind of great. And we did have a solo section. They made an effort to make the composition interesting and have diversity within it again it's just the final time i mention this I, I promise it's just because of the mix it was less apparent that that was the case and so you're left with the foundational kind of guitar and like bass lines and stuff like that where there were like a couple of different ideas there and we we repeated that quite a bit so so that was a shame but but outside of that i think the guitars were played well we had strummed acoustics and electric parts there we had some interesting sort of lead motifs there as well as a dedicated guitar solo section where we had some interesting major my ideas as well as some blues and pentatonics and even some chromatic -y kind of like um chromatic -y kind of semitonal bits which were kind of dope it was classy it was nice it was fun the guitars had a lot of different ideas there as well as the foundational kind of chord progressions within the verse and choruses that we played through throughout there easy to listen to very palatable the acoustics and a bright strum part uh, contrasted well with some of the distorted lead playing, so that was cool. The drums were great, we had a variety of different grooves on the different sort of cymbal kick and snare patterns and we explored the toms a little bit as well. We knew to sort of park and allow room for the vocals to come through in the mix um, without a sort of oversaturating things there. And yeah, no, they kept in time really neatly. There was a lot of range as well as the 16th patterns or some of the, even the China symbols and various other kind of parts of the kit there. We weren't afraid to go away from the beat too much, if, if only to just ensure that we came back to the, what was important, which was supporting the singers in their main part and role with the guitars. And I think that the bass line underneath the drums was solid as well. They were typically staying with the root notes and not been going too far from that, but nonetheless, it was appreciated that, that we kind of had that sort of like, again, that solid foundation with the groove there with the kicks snares that was good the keys were a little bit less subtle i didn't really hear them through as cleanly they might have been playing like chord progressions and like like pad like stuff so that was more of kind of a subtle thing behind the, the guitars but either way that was that was good as well they complemented the foil well ultimately aside from like the guitar solo we had later on some of those other sort of breaks ultimately the accompaniment there i think was sort of meant to sort of provide a backing and foundation for the two singers that were in front of the stage and i think that that with that in mind they served their purpose well the main theme overall with the sad, with the minor chords there, the kind of blues, the kind of wailing solo, the style of vocals that we had there, um, ultimately kind of made me seem like it was kind of like almost like a balladist kind of thing there. We were going through our breakup. It was very raw. There wasn't a lot of happiness within the arrangement for like major chord starting progressions. Um, we had a sort of bluesy, rocky overtone stylistically with the instruments and the compositional setup there. And, um, it was more of kind of like a sing-along by the campfire kind of thing where people could sort of relate to each other. It was a slower track where we tried to allow, uh, we, we encouraged the audience to sing along. And it was more of a kind of a, hey, can you relate to this kind of moment there where we speak our truth, but we're encouraging others to sort of like share their commiserations in that. Ultimately, I think that the same things made chord progressions going back between Bum, 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 bum. Like those kind of chords there. They're, they're, they're those power chords there are kind of 
relatively neutral enough even with the distortion to allow for a lot of variation within the melodies and harmonies on top anyway so it, it, it was cool we just didn't try to do anything too complicated with the main theme and i think that was a smart idea it allowed for more space for the singing to come through etc for the other instruments but the studio recording mixing and mastering i mean i've spoken about the leveling outside of that i think that there was great tone to the guitars bass drums keys and stuff like that even though i didn't hear the keys too much might have been a little bit of resonant frequency in some of the lower floor toms but aside from that it was okay I think that uh, the vocals weren't, they, they weren't over compressed. They might've been like a little bit of kind of like a little bit of distortion occasionally, but like that were just, that was loud. And um, you know, things were, yeah, th there was, that was a bit of dynamic range. It wasn't the same loudest all the time. Uh, it was nice and loud without pumping. So the bus compression limiting was handled. I mean, effectively, this is my review of this track from an actor named Power Station Tell the First Terror. And hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go show them some love via the various social medias. And I'm sure they're on digital streaming platforms and stay cool. Stay safe and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time. As you need to help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world. And I'll catch you in the next SP Patrons video. Spider-Hands out.